Kate here with another video and this one is going to be about my favorite female characters in Victorian literature. So I have a list, I think it's around 20 and there are so many more characters that I could include but I basically just took a look at my favorite Victorian novels and picked the characters that came to mind first. And first on the list is Rachel Verinder from The Moonstone. I find The Moonstone um, is one of those books that I grow in love with it the longer uh, it had been since I'd read it. So I am reading it with my Patreon book club in November and December. We'll discuss it in December. And I'm really looking forward to revisiting this book because I think I didn't realize that the characterization was going to be as strong as it was. And I find that Rachel Verinder is such an intriguing character because she is full of inner turmoil and the kind of steadfastness that she has throughout all that, even when she has certain really hard things she's dealing with emotionally uh, to be as um, as steadfast as she is, is really impressive. And so I find her a really admirable character. And then the next one is Judith from In the Roar of the Sea. Speaking of steadfast, I think that is just a trait I will admire in any character. Um, when everything is hard and when even when you're trying to do the right thing, even if you don't know it's going to turn out all right in the end. And Judith is put in such a hard place. And um, there is a little bit of the kind of the dainty Victorian woman fainting um, that happens in this, but I find her such a, an inspiring character. And so I thought, I, I just, I have to read more by this author and I still haven't done that. So I need to fix that. And hopefully that will happen this Victober. And the next on the list is Mrs. Cratchit from A Christmas Carol. I think that um, making a warm and inviting home, making a life-giving home is priceless. You, you don't know what you are missing until it's gone. And so when you're in a household that doesn't have warmth, that doesn't have this sense of um, welcoming in guests and delighting in making a, a place full of beauty and delicious food and a, a place that feels safe and inviting, um, it's, I, I love that about Mrs. Cratchit and they are poor as church mice, as they say. And I just love the, uh, coming out with the minuscule size plum pudding and how it becomes this huge event in the family and celebrating the beauty that is there, even when you don't have very much, uh, knowing how, how very rich you are, if you are surrounded by those that you love. Um, there's something really special about that. So I really love Mrs. The, the chapter with Mrs. Cratchit. Um, walking out with a plum pudding. I think that um, she is one of the heroes of A Christmas Carol. And it's so, you, you can really overlook that scene if you're not looking carefully, but I think she's just such a special lady. And I love that Dickens included her, that, that bit with her. And then the next one is Miss Maddie from Cranford. She's a woman who has several sad things happen to her as you're reading this story and you're getting to know her bit by bit. And, um, you do, uh, you, you just have so much empathy for her. She is such a kind, kind woman. And um, to see these hard things uh, that she goes through and the way that she still um, shows kindness throughout all of that is so moving. And I really love her as a character. And even though it's a really subtle kind of collection of stories, I find that she is a character I think of Fondly. Although I do wonder, I do wonder if it's Judy Dench playing her in the Cranford miniseries. That is also an influence on that. And then the next one is a Janet Dempster from Janet's Repentance uh, by George Eliot. Uh, speaking of strong women, Janet is that she has to go through um, everyone in town making assumptions about her and thinking that they know her and not really knowing her much at all. And um, the obstacles that she has to go through. And I just find um, kind of making the decisions that you know are right, regardless of what everyone in this small little town will think of you is remarkable. And uh, yeah, so that little novella made such an impression on me. And then Katrin from A Welsh Witch. In a similar vein, she's someone who everyone in town thinks they know her and they really don't. They don't know a thing about her. And um, I love that slowly but surely kind of how amazing she is uh, comes to show and comes to be true. And so then everyone is kind of eating their words and um, just kind of biding her time. 
while everyone is judging her and not knowing her. The next character is Aurora Floyd from Mary Elizabeth Braddon's book titled Aurora Floyd. And she's someone who there's an air of mystery about her because you know her at the very beginning and then she goes away to school and comes back and something is very different about her and you're not sure what it is. Um, and I, I wasn't sure completely while I was in the middle what I thought about Aurora. But as it went on and on and this book continued to be more and more amazing, I thought she is amazing. So Aurora Floyd is one of those books that I instantly could not wait to reread it and revisit it. And I, yeah, it's so good. Um, and Aurora was definitely one of the highlights for me uh, as in that book. And then the next one is Isabel Sleaford from the, the Doctor's Wife. The Doctor's Wife by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. She has some great female characters. And Isabel, what I love is that she is a little bit like Marianne in that she starts off pretty immature and she has glaring personality flaws. Like you, it, it's, it's not hard for you to pick things about her that bother you. Um, but as it goes on, she really shows a lot of growth. And that's what I think you need to focus on when you're thinking about Isabel as a character. Think about, is she changing and growing for the better? And she really does. And um, I, I love the journey that she goes on as a character. And then uh, two sisters from Deerbrook, both Margaret and Hester. And Margaret is a bit like um, Eleanor Dashwood and Hester is a bit like Marianne Dashwood from Sense and Sensibility. Now, what I really enjoyed about um, reading Deerbrook was that I read it, um, you know, one Victober, and then a little under a year later, I read it with several friends. And as we were reading it, I was coming back to it and knowing that one sister had been my favorite, you know, that she just stood out. She was my favorite character. And then as I was rereading it and, um, the ladies who were reading it with me started bringing up these very interesting aspects of, uh, of the, the other sister who had not been my favorite, but aspects and character traits about her and strengths that I hadn't thought of. And I had kind of seen all her personality flaws, but I hadn't seen these strengths that she had. I hadn't seen it from the angle that they had. And so I really appreciated reading uh, Deerbrook with friends to notice new things about the book that I hadn't noticed before. And it just gave me a whole extra level of appreciation for this book. Um, the romances in this book, they're not why I like Deerbrook. Um, the romances actually are, can be very frustrating, but Margaret and Hester as characters, they are a reason that I really, really love the book. And even um, their maid, whose name escapes me now, she's a wonderful character too. So yes, just some great female characters in Deerbrook. The next character is Romola from George Eliot's novel, Romola. I feel like crying whenever I think about Romola because of, um, I think she has kind of some of the saddest things happen to her and kind of, what are you going to do with life when pretty much everything gets taken away from you? How are you going to deal with it? And um, it can be just agonizingly slow at points, the book Romola, but it has made such an impression on me. And I find her and the hunger that she has to live life to the fullest, even with those disappointments, so inspiring. And I find her such a character to look up to and to aspire to be like. The next character on the list is Dinah Morris from Adam Bede. And Dinah is one of the most unique characters in Victorian literature to me. Um, she is, for one thing, she's a nuanced female character, and you're not going to see that as often in Victorian literature. In addition to that, she's a female preacher. You're really not going to see that a lot in Victorian literature. And I find that Dinah um, showing kindness to anyone and everyone, that is her motto that she lives by. And she is the most loving character. There is no hypocrisy about her. Even when there are people who don't live up to her moral standard, she does not hold it against them. She meets people where they're at. And I find her so inspiring and She's just one of my all time favorite female characters. So yes, yay, Dinah Morris, I love Dinah. The next character is Edith Granger from Dombey and Son. And Katie from Books and Things, she it's all down to her that I read Dombey and Son and I'm so glad that I did. And Edith is such a fascinating Dickens woman. 
and um, really, she really stands out from a lot of his other female characters. And I find um, she's so unexpected. You think you know her, you think uh, you have her down exactly what she's going to be like, and then I love that she turns everything around and you had no idea she was going to be um, such a uh, nuanced and uh, full of depth character. And she was one of the highlights of the reading experience of Dombey and Son for me. And the next one is Al Alicia Audley from Lady Audley's Secret. So modern day Americans, I think would say Alicia, but when I listened to the audiobook, it was Alicia. So I guess I will say Alicia. Uh, what I love is that she was a character that I overlooked. So, you know, there's Lady Audley who's married to um, Lord Audley and she is his second wife. His first wife passed away. You know that that's, you know, right at the beginning of the book. That's not a spoiler. And he has a daughter who is not that much uh, younger than Lady Audley. So his daughter is Alicia. And I had just not paid attention to her character very much uh, the first time I was, I was reading. But I, she was one of my favorite things about the reread that I did of Lady Audley's Secret this fall. I mean, she's funny. She's extremely funny. And um, she, you can just really empathize with the frustrations that she has with the miscommunication that's happening around her and also just how she feels so helpless to see everything kind of crumbling and failing around her and there's not much that she's able to do but she to me was just like you don't mess with her and i really loved alicia and the next character is mary barton so uh mary barton the title character of elizabeth gaskell's novel and um Again, trials, tribulations, there's a real um, running theme through these characters. Uh, and I think what I really appreciate is that Mary feels very childish at the beginning and at the end she feels very much like she has journeyed into adulthood, but she feels, she feels experienced and seasoned, but she doesn't feel jaded. And so I think um, that's the uh, harder choice to make. Instead of when really bad things happen, it's easy to be bitter. That's the easy choice but to choose to um, grow from those things that have happened and to say, you know, how can I use this really hard experience that I've lived through and channel it into good um, in this new stage in my life? Uh, because life is not fair. Life is not fair. And so I really love that about Mary. And the next character is Betsy Trotwood from David Copperfield. Betsy Trotwood, a character that is not a doormat at all. And she is one of the highlights of the book David Copperfield for me because she is so funny. Just from the second she's on the page, she makes every scene that she's in fascinating and lively. There is just this real energy she brings to every scene. And I really just, I love Betsy Trotwood as a character. So the whole thing with the donkeys and Janet, it's just a highlight of the book for me. And then Dorothea from Middlemarch. Dorothea is another character that you have a great character arc with. She has so many assumptions about what her life is going to be like and how um, the ways that she is going to change the world. And uh, she has to learn a lot of hard lessons uh, about what it's like to live in the world and to try to make those changes and uh, to live with people that misunderstand you and uh, to be consistently pretty much intentionally misunderstood by them and what a sorrow it is in her life. But then to see her on the other end of that towards the end of the book is so moving and I just find I have so much fondness for Dorothea as a character. So she does start out, yes, she has many flaws, but I love seeing the growth and that's what you want to see in a great character. The next one on the list is Mary Garth, also from Middlemarch. What I love about Mary Garth is Mary is, she's in love with someone who he has potential, but he is not at all there yet. And I really love that she's not like, oh, you know, he didn't, he, he, people just misunderstand him. Like, she's like, no, like, dude, you messed up. And um, she really holds him accountable and is like, you need to do better. And um, yeah, just holds him accountable. And she does not put up with anything. And I find her just, whenever she is in a scene, I'm like, I wish we had more Mary Garth scenes. So I love her as a character. And I would love a fan fiction of Middlemarch 
with Mary Garth as the main character. I would just love that. Okay, the next one is Marion Halcombe from The Woman in White. Um, I'm, I think pretty much everyone who loves The Woman in White, Marion is a real highlight to them, especially in contrast to her sister, Laura, who is definitely written like a like Victorian uh, dainty China doll. And um, yeah, she's, <laughs> she's not all that inspiring next to Marion for a 21st century reader to, to be reading about. And Marion is so brave. There are some really creepy and messed up things happening in this story. And Marion is so brave in the midst of all that. And she has uh, such a good strong head on her shoulders and is really able to kind of see um see where they're trying to go she's able to see the long game and um is such a loyal sister and i love that loyalty um i find so endearing in characters and the next one is margaret hale from north and south margaret sees some hard times <laughs> she really it is very much um, she is feels like a kid at the beginning and then her journey into womanhood and um, just the way that her horizons are broadened and her eyes are open to experiences outside of herself and the empathy and compassion that she shows uh, to those less fortunate I find really noble and then next is Jane Eyre one of my all-time favorites. And like I've said before, Jane Eyre, I don't love the story of Jane Eyre for the romance, even though I do find it romantic. The highlight of Jane Eyre for me is Jane Eyre herself. And I find um, for someone who has gone through um, and had uh, gone through such hard things and had a very, very lonely childhood, um, to still be able to see the beauty in life and have such passion um, I am no bird, no net ensnares me. To be filled with that is such a beautiful and remarkable thing. And I think I love that, that she has this fire inside her. Um, and even though um, she feels a little bit helpless at certain points, I love that you, you do get that um, real fierce inner strength that you see within the character of Jane and the crazy journey that she goes on as a character. Um, and then lastly, two wives and daughters characters. Molly Gibson and Cynthia Kirkpatrick. You may find it weird for me to include Cynthia on the list, but the more I experience Wives and Daughters, either in book format or miniseries adaptation format, the more I grow in sympathy for Cynthia. Now, Cynthia and um, Molly, apparently Elizabeth Gaskell, um, base them both on her daughter, Mita, who um, she split into the two characters of Molly and Cynthia. And this is a bit of a spoiler. So I will just say kind of foolish decisions that Cynthia makes um, when she is around 16. Uh, I think it can get really frustrating thinking, you know, why did you do that? Or rather, why are you dealing it with, with it the way that you are now once further in the story? But think about how um, Molly's life was when she was 16. And when something first happens, um, when Mr. Cox proposes or when he tries to send her the note, and how um, her father deals with it for her versus Cynthia being alone. She doesn't even have money to buy clothes to go to the party and how very different their circumstances are. And um, I just, I grow in sympathy for her every time I read it. No. Is she flawed? Certainly. And I would pick Molly any day over Cynthia, but she to me is a really interesting, complex character. And so I love her for that. Uh, and as I read the book, I'm just always like very intrigued by her. Thank you as always for watching. Please let me know um, some of your favorite female characters that were not on this list. And I will be back with another video soon. Bye.